Hi everyone, warm welcome. I am Garima. Together with my colleagues, we are presenting before you our POC on artificial intelligence for healthy diet. So, are you all ready to do a deep dive into our healthy world? Well, let me take you through our model. Let's try to understand the problem, and then we will move on to the slides. So, what is this app all about? Let me put it in simple words. What we all need in today's world is a healthy lifestyle, a nutrition-filled diet, and no more doctors. Today. Everything starts at the consumer level, with consumers becoming increasingly aware of the health habits and they are taking care of their health. Everyone is in a rush to move from reactive health care to preventive health. In fact, food is your medicine in a sense. It helps people to perform at their peak. And you know guys what? Today, one of the social challenges, the cost of health care, which is not so affordable by a common man. It is much better to prevent and keep yourself safe and fit rather than letting it slip and having to start treating the disease. We want here to provide you a solution before the disease starts. And what you all need to do? Whenever you are eating anything, be it anywhere, anytime, just click a simple picture of the food item and our app will in turn tell you the amount of nutrients, proteins, carbohydrates, fats you are going to consume. Isn't it interesting guys? So let me quickly share with you my screen and we will explain you why are we even doing this food analysis. Today, measuring food activity is not a problem. What about food and its nutrition? What we eat and in how much quantity that can prevent fatal diseases. There are a number of apps available in the app store. But few apps require the user to enter the ingredients in the food. While on the other hand, few apps require the user to enter the name of the food. Our app and approach is simple. We will be explaining it in the further slides. So let me quickly move further and explain you the design details. This is how our app will look like to an end user. A simple a user when logged into our app will simply have to click a picture of the food item. In turn, our app will give details of our details about the calories, fats, proteins, and carbohydrates present in the food. As simple as that. Let's quickly look at the approach and the design details. Once the user clicks the food item, we will have contours. Through these contours which we are obtaining, we will be recognizing the food items present in the plate. Once the food is recognized correctly, we will be determining the area and calculating the volume for it. And then these details will be sent to an API where the API will give us the details about the nutrition, the calories, fats, proteins present in the food and then we will be displaying the results. In order to explain you a bit more, we will be creating a custom data set and then we have annotated the images using IMG box tool. We then build it up a model. We then trained the model using mask RCNN algorithm. Now, what is this mask RCNN does? It simply creates a mask around your food. And once you have a mask, you can simply create or take out the surface area present in the food item of your plate. Once we have the mask surface area, we can move on to calculate the volume of the food. And this volume in turn will be helpful in will be helpful in determining the weight of the food. Once we have the weight, we will be sending it to API and then calculating the nutritional values and then this, this can be displayed to the end user. So now I would be handing over to my colleague. She will be explaining you about the volume calculation. Over to you, Shika. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, Garima. I will now walk you all through the technical details of calculation of area, volume, and weight parameters in our project. Once the object detection is done through mask RCNN, the next step is to calculate the surface area of the food detected through the pixel count of the mask. When we initially tried to do that, we faced a lot of challenges as the area calculated for some of the images was coming out to be very huge. We later realized that it was due to different image sizes, different image resolutions, the pixel count and the pixel density present in the images. 
To solve that issue, we introduced the use of a reference object. We initially used a fixed sized point for our testing purposes and the results came out really good. But later we changed the reference object to thumb uh, to make it more user friendly. Next was to calculate the volume of the object detected. To do so, we analyzed many different approaches and we did our own testing to finalize the approach. The shortlisted approaches were uh, taking uh, two images of the food, one top image and one side image. Second was uh, estimating the height of the food objects. Third was calculating the pixels per square inch. And the fourth one was uh, using the depth sensing cameras. So uh, looking at all the pros of the uh, approaches, we finalized the uh, estimation of height approach and we went ahead with that. Now I'll be sharing my screen uh, to explain you further. The volume is calculated by approximating the height of the food item. We then calculate the weight of the item by using the standard food density. And uh, we pass that weight to the Ethanol API. That API gives us the uh, calories, micronutrients and macronutrients for the food item. I will now walk you through the demo of the object detection and weight calculation by a mod. We clicked an image of this apple. Uh, we weighed the apple with the weighing scale. The weighing scale is showing the weight of the apple uh, as 165 grams. Uh, we then pass this image through our model uh, to check the object detection and the uh, weight estimation accuracy of the model. So let me show the model. So this is the same image. Uh, we have passed it through our model. It has detected as, it as an apple. And uh, the weight estimations are as follows. So as you can see, it has estimated the weight of the apple as 180 grams. And the other uh, micro and macronutrients are also displayed, uh, which are fetched from the API. I will now run the model for one of the other food classes uh, and show you the results. Now I'm running it for a slice of pizza. So let's see the predictions. So these are the predictions. The uh, weight of the pizza slice has been estimated as 101 grams and the total estimated calories are 270. I will now pass it over to Marguerite to show us the Thank you, Shikha. Hi all, I am Madhuri. Till now, Shikha has explained you how our model is performing on a single food item in a plate. And now I will walk you through how our model is predicting for multiple food items on a single plate. Now, let's take a look at this. Here you can see in the image, uh, there are four samosas placed in a plate and each samosa has been well masked which is an important task in our uh, uh, project uh, so since each calculations are based on the masking area and uh, the thumb reference here you can also see thumb has been recognized very well and here let us see the model predictions here our model is predicting the weight for each samosas here and the nutritional values based on the weight of each samosas now let us take a look at the most common food item that we use in our daily basis which is rice give me a moment So here you can see the image, uh, there is a regular size plate and the rice has been placed on a regular size plate. And let us see the model predictions. The weight of the rice has been predicted as uh, 249 grams, which is uh, that we can analyze it from the image as well. And uh, the nutritional values are based on the 250 grams of rice as well. So now let us take a look at the most common appetizer the french fries and the cheeseburger as well and first let me show you the french fries here so in the image you can see there are there is a french fries pouch so now let us see our model predictions on the okay here our model is predicting 
116 grams of french fries in that pouch so the nutritional values are based on the 116 116 grams of uh, french fries lastly i would like to show you the cheeseburger here you can see there is a cheeseburger with a single patty and a cheese in it so let us see how much the weight of the cheeseburger has been predicted by our model so here our model is predicting 298 grams of cheeseburger uh, when we are exploring on how uh, how much the average weight of the cheeseburger uh, in a google then it was showing around 300 grams so our model predictions are almost accurate here and the nutritional values are based on uh, the 298 grams of cheeseburger so to arrive at this particular result we had come across many challenges so here i would like to mention few of the learnings and challenges that we faced during this process and uh, to begin with we had explored uh, many pre trained models uh, and uh, here we are using coco model on top of which we are training our uh, data and we had explored many object detection algorithms some of which are rcnn and faster rcnn uh, and uh, mask rcnn here we found mask rcnn as accurate because uh, we are uh, uh, making all the calculations based on a single uh, image and uh, the image should show the masking area for a food based on which we are making the calculations so we found that mask as the input for the requirements and the moving forward we came across image annotation tools so after collect uh, to annotate our images collected images we found many image annotating tools of which image uh, label img and image lab was uh, uh, giving uh, the required results so required in, uh, which was helpful in uh, Uh, getting the required information from the images and uh, next is api analysis through postman uh, we explored how to use postman what's the uses of postman then postman uh, uh, through postman we could able to test all the apis that we got to uh, and um, we can able to see what the apis are giving and what it is accepting the parameters and uh, as you know each learning comes with its challenges um, and here i would like to mention the major challenges we faced during this process first one is creating our own data set which was a time consuming part because we have to uh, collect all the images uh, through different sources like google and bing etc and we collected here uh, around the 700 images and annotating all the 700 images was a time consuming task Uh, later on after collecting all those images and annotating uh, training all those images and uh, annotate um, training all those images uh, and as we increase our classes number of classes and number of images or uh, data set you can say um, so as we increase our number of data sets and uh, number of training epochs we uh, the gpu was uh, running out of the memory and this whole issues we were facing so finally we were able to train for eight classes successfully and uh, last but not the least the calculation part calculating surface area and volume weight for a single food item uh, was uh, easy although it was easy and uh, it was challenging when it comes to uh, multiple food items on a plate uh, so we uh, came up uh, this challenge successfully we could able to uh, do the calculations for all the food items and all the food classes and as a result you just saw i was showing you all the results now and uh, up, in spite of all these challenges we could able to integrate our uh, a uh, model uh, with a flask and that will be explained by my colleague uh, garima so over to garima thank you thanks madhuri for sharing us with the learnings and challenges now i will be quickly taking you through a wrap which is a beta version and based on the user feedback we will be creating a beta version 2 on it so for a new user There are two options available on the screen. 
First is the open camera where he can click a fresh picture of the food item he or she is eating. There is another option he can choose any picture from his gallery and he can view the nutritional value present in it. So let me quickly go and open any image present in my gallery and click on evaluate. So on a single click of evaluate, the details are fetched from the backend from an API and nutritional value present in this image are displayed on the screen. So it, our API determines that it's a cheeseburger and carbohydrates, fats, proteins and calories are also determined from the image. Let's see few more images. This time I'm choosing an apple. Well, these are the nutritional values present in an apple. Let's quickly scroll through few other images. How about we choose a rice which we daily eat. Well, this also displays the carbohydrates, fats, proteins and calories present in rice. And lastly, I'll show you a pizza slice. So this is how you can track your daily nutritional content which you are consuming. Thank you. Thank you for the application demo, Garima. I will now share my screen and walk you all through the future plans for the model. So in future, we plan to further expand our data set on more images of existing food categories and further tune and optimize the model. Also, the plan is to train the model on more food categories to expand the reach of our application. Another feature that we want to add to our application is personalization and under personalization there would be two categories one for nutrition tracking and one for diet recommendation. The nutrition tracking feature would log the users full day nutrition that would be derived from the images provided by the user during the day. So as we all know for a healthy lifestyle maintenance there are many useful nutrients that should be present in one's dietary intake. So uh, since the feature would keep a track of the nutrition consumed by the user at the end of the day it can provide a report on the nutrients that that were lacking from the user's diet and he can take the required actions to incorporate the same in his diet. In diet recommendation section, the alternate diet options would be recommended to the user depending upon whether the user has selected weight maintenance, weight reduction or weight gain category. Our application would provide similar low or high calorie dishes or substitutions of food items in the same food dishes. This model can also be used in other applications. I would talk on two real world applications. So the model can be used as a weight detection application to show the approximate weight if someone doesn't have a weighing scale. Another application would be in supermarkets before adding vegetables or fruits to the cart, customers can weigh the items they wish to purchase and can increase or decrease the quantity instead of doing the same at the billing counter. This will save a lot of time and will make the purchases much more efficient.